What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I have another part of my BFA retrospective series here for you today. This time I wanted to cover something that has been around since the beginning. Azerite armor. Yes, that stuff that replaced tier sets and is still just as mandatory as tier, but now even more so because you need to find pieces with good traits on them, which can result in your best in slot piece coming from some form of content you may never want to do. Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. While I do have some grievances with Azerite armor, there are quite a few positive aspects to the concept as well, so I'll do my best to explain both the pros and cons of the system in this video, at least in my opinion. If you end up liking said video, maybe you should probably like or subscribe? I don't know, seems like a good idea to me. Otherwise, a treasure goblin Sheba might come for your BOEs you forgot to loot in Nihilotha. Just saying. Anyways, on to our topic, Azerite armor. I'll start this little tale from the beginning. Tier, as most of you probably know, was sets of armor that were specific to each class of character, and upon wearing a sufficient amount of matching items, you'd get passive bonuses such as a damage buff to one of your moves, or causing you to gain energy back when one of your moves critically hit, you know, things like that. Tier would mainly come from running raids, but in a lot of expansions there were PvP tier sets as well. These sets went through a lot of changes over the many expansions of WoW, However, PvP tier sets were removed by the end of Warlords of Draenor, and raiding tier left with Legion. Enter Azerite Armor, which has many novel concepts, and honestly there are quite a few things I kinda liked about it. For one, you don't have to raid or PvP to get Azerite Armor. It can be acquired from numerous sources, such as world quests, emissary caches, world bosses, black empire assaults, horrific visions, and can be bought with Titan Residuum. There are even bind on account catch up pieces you can get from rares in the assaults, albeit their relatively low item level in comparison to the other alternatives. This was fantastic news for folks who might not be that skilled at raiding or PvP or just frankly didn't have the time to do either, as those were the only ways you could get tier in prior iterations of WoW. Except like the world bosses in Pandaria, I think they gave tier every now and then, but that was basically about it. Anyways, Azerite armor is essentially modular tier. It consists of the helmet, shoulders, and chest piece, unlike tier taking up six or more slots at one point in the game. The modular part of the armor is kind of like a huge peggle board looking thing of abilities you can select to use in your current specialization, if your Heart of Azeroth is high enough level. This allowed for a gradual progression in power at the beginning of BFA, which made sense due to there being no essences or corruption around to further buff your damage. Nowadays, with the artifact knowledge catch-up, you'll basically have enough Azerite level to basically wear whatever you want, so it's not really as big of a deal nowadays, but yeah. On epic quality Azerite armor, you will have an outer ring, which consists of abilities only your class and spec can use. The next ring will have one ability unique to that type of content the piece is from. For example, Gorak Tool's Mantle has the unique Azerite trait Blightborn Infusion, which is a massive crit proc. The other remaining traits on that ring will be class and spec specific again. The next ring will have generally stat procs, but for tank and healing specs it does offer some extra defensive slash utility. The innermost ring will always have some form of utility or heal on it, which again is extremely useful and a good addition, as sometimes I do kinda want ways to not die. I mean, I know I'm a DPS and all, but there were rarely any tier benefits that even offered slight passive defensive or healing bonuses ever, so it's kinda nice. Due to there being a fair number of spec specific traits, quite a few, shall we say, interesting builds have been made in BFA. For instance, at one point there was a meme build for Outlaw Rogue where you could stack the trait Snake Eyes. What this build originally required was extremely unorthodox as you had to wear a dagger in your main hand, which removed the ability to use your main finishing move, Dispatch. This, of course, was unexpected by the developers, so this particular Azerite trait was hot fixed to remove this form of playstyle. Still though, it was pretty interesting to see what people were able to come up with, and obviously the system showed the original intention of Azerite armor being able to be customized without feeling forced to farm for four specific pieces of gear from a raid or something like that. So yeah, basically you could pick and choose exactly what you wanted to improve about your character's toolkit, which is a really great idea, on paper. So here's where I started to have problems with Azerite armor. 
Some Azurite traits are simply too good to not use, and are to the point where you have an illusion of choice at times. For example, if you're an outlaw rogue doing any content with multiple targets, i.e. Mythic Plus, or even half of frickin' Nihilotha, you need to have one Keep Your Wits About You trait. This is one of those traits where you only need one, but if you don't have it, boy are you going to feel it. There are a lot of traits like that for other specs. Light's Decree for Holy Paladins is another example, as it increases the duration of Avenging Wrath by 5 seconds, which is huge. Rapid Reload for BM Hunter is another example for any AoE content as is Chaotic Transformation for Havoc Demon Hunters, Revolving Blades for Demon Hunters, you, you see where I'm getting with this, I think. There are just a sizable number of Azerite traits where you only need one, but you need that one, which can kind of pigeonhole you into a certain piece of gear, even if there are upgrades you could get, if you don't have a way to substitute in that same trait on a different piece or in another way. The other conundrum is that there is often one specific Azerite trait that you need to stack the crap out of for the most ideal build, or for a build to even work in general, which is always a double-edged sword when it comes to RPGs or, more specifically, gearing in WoW. Stat priorities have existed for ages, since there is generally always one or two stats that every character will want the most of. While I understand that, doing the same with Azerite armor just again feels like the choices being made aren't much of choices. I guess this problem kind of stems from all the information and simulating we can do of our characters nowadays, as everyone always wants to do the most damage or the most healing or the most whatever, which results in this sort of funnel effect where it feels like out of all the dozens of pieces of Azerite armor, there are really only two or maybe three that are your best pieces. If you don't care about min-maxing, it's a lot less of a concern, I suppose, but there are a lot of people that do. The fact that those best pieces might come from content you don't like doing or don't have a raid team to do it with can make you feel obligated to do stuff you might not enjoy, which is never really ever a good thing. However, the biggest, most obvious issue I have with Azerite armor is the fact that it doesn't swap between specs. I mean, seriously, why? That'd be like saying you needed three different tier sets for each spec of Rogue. This is probably the easiest thing to change in the system that the development team has been very adamant about leaving in the game. I mean, sure, once I have, like, a billion pieces of Azerite gear filling my bags, it's not a big deal. But if you were just starting out, or only had, say, one helmet, Oh, well, I guess you're just gonna have to fly back to your capital city, reset your armor, oh wait, sorry, pay to reset your armor, we're gonna talk about that in a second too, change specs, put in the traits again, and then go back to whatever you were doing. I mean, come on. I understand the meaningful decision rhetoric we babbled about in game design classes, but this is just arbitrary. Speaking of paying to reset your own gear, the fact that this cost goes up exponentially is pretty lame too. If it was supposed to be some sort of a gold sink for the economy, or just to make you really consider if you wanted to play your off spec, then it didn't really work. I sincerely feel you should have been able to change your Azerite traits with a tome, just like you can change your Heart of Azeroth essences and your talents. Or, heck, fine. There could have been a new tome specific to Azerite armor if they really wanted either way, but it's just one of those things that has irked me for a long time. Oh, and the fact you have to use the crapper, I mean, the scrapper, sorry, to destroy Azerite armor and get your residuum back is bogus, by the way. Whew, okay. So, now I've kind of sort of explained why I like and dislike the system, but what has Blizzard done for the future of the game regarding the way this all played out? These armor sets, after all, provide quite a lot of power increases and quality of life to specs, so just flat out removing them at the end of the expansion is going to hurt quite a bit. Well, for starters, quite a few of the Azerite traits are being rolled into the toolkits of specs in Shadowlands. For instance, I believe Magus of the Dead, the unholy DK single target trait, is being rolled into the Apocalypse ability. The same is true for Chaotic Transformation, as that is being made a baseline effect with Metamorphosis for Havoc Demon Hunters. So there are things that will help even out the power loss of Azerite armor going away, while also giving the specs better playstyle and fluidity. I can only hope for similar things to happen with other classes or specs, as I haven't gotten my hands on Alpha or Beta yet, so I mainly just dig through class change articles every now and then and see what shows up. I think Blizzard may have also realized the issue with so many sources of Azerite traits being locked behind specific content, which is why we'll be able to customize our own legendaries in Shadowlands. 
So while there have been quite a few hiccups with the Azerite armor system, in my opinion, it definitely wasn't the worst thing they could have done to replace Tyr with for an expansion, yeah? Except for the whole not swapping between specs and having to fly back to Dizarre Lore to change out my traits and paying money for it. Seriously, what the heck, Blizzard? Come on, just let us use a tome to do it. Anyways, that's my take on how Azerite armor was both good and bad at the same time, resulting in a mixed reception, at least for me. Some people may love the Azerite armor system, and I still really do like the idea of choosing your bonuses. However, in some scenarios, there is a feeling that the choice is very limited, or that it isn't really much of a choice at all, to be frank. It seems that Blizzard's development team has taken a lot of the better parts of Azerite armor and rolled them into specs where it was most impactful, so that is a promising sign to say the least. If you like this video, maybe take a peek at my retrospective on Ajra Kamas, the Legendary Cloak, or even some of my other stuff. I put up new videos every weekday, so I should always have something different for you to check out. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.